Okay, my people, uh, let's take a look at the amazing powers of a trapezoid. We're talking about the properties of a trapezoid. And then we're going to go into some cool stuff about uh, what we call the median, or sometimes it's called, depends upon the textbook, it's called the mid-segment of a trapezoid. So let's start with the basics here. In order to be a trapezoid, by definition, we just need one pair, not two has to be exactly one pair of opposite sides have to be parallel. Not the other pair, just this one pair. And obviously you can see from this picture, those two sides are parallel. And as long as we have exactly one pair to be parallel, we are guaranteed to be a trapezoid. Well, if you can remember back from all the properties of parallel lines and transversals and alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles and corresponding angles and same side interior angles. Hopefully you can see that this line over here is a transversal to the two parallel lines and this line over here is another transversal uh, within the trapezoid. So what does that mean when we see those transversals? Hopefully you can see that no matter what angle this is, and I'm going to call it 80 for example, we should automatically know what that angle it is, and that has to be 100. Why? It's because those are same side interior angles. They're going to be supplementary. Well, I'm going to make up a different angle for over here. I'm going to call it 50 degrees. And now hopefully you can deduce what that angle is right there. And hopefully you can see those are same side interior angles as well. In this case, they're going to be supplementary. So this angle has to be 130. So there we have it. Uh, and if you do add up all four angles, it is a quadrilateral. And all quadrilaterals do have 360 degrees. Um, so we have talked about same side interior angles. Hopefully you can see some transversals in here. And we do have a verification that there are 360 degrees in all four sided shapes. And in particular, this one right here, this is a trapezoid. All right, so what else is going on with this shape in here? So um, I'm going to draw in some an extra line in here. And where is this extra line going to be drawn in from? Well, I'm going to connect this dot to this dot right in there. And when I connect those two dots, I get this new segment in here. And this segment is what we call the median of a trapezoid or the mid-segment of a trapezoid. Now, it's officially, uh, I, went, I got too ahead of myself there, it's not officially yet a median or a mid-segment because in order to be uh, a mid-segment or a median, we need that segment to start at the midpoint of one leg of the triangle, so one leg of the trapezoid, and it goes to the other leg of the trapezoid on the other side, the midpoint of the other leg. So. You can't draw the mid-segment down in here. It just doesn't work. It has to be going to the midpoints of the two uh, legs on both sides. So that's why I put these tick marks in, seeing that these two segments are now congruent. And I put that these two segments are congruent. Therefore, we have the mid-segment uh, or median, whatever you want to call it. And it turns out there's a mathematical relationship between... Uh, this base and the base that's on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it turns out that the median is the average of the bases. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I make up some silly numbers in here, if I make up that to be 10 and this to be uh, 40, for example, well, what's the average of 10 and 40? Well, I add up the two bases and I divide by 2. It looks like the median is going to be 25 units. And that kind of makes sense. It's the average. It's halfway between. And visually here, what does it represent? Well, it's, it's going to the midpoint of the leg. So therefore, it's it, 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 it kind of it, it looks very visual. And it, it, it makes sense to me uh, from an intuitive standpoint that if I were to increase by 15 units over here from going from 10 to 25, 
I should increase another in 15 units from 25 to 40 to get to the other side because it's halfway. It's the mid segment of the trapezoid. So let's take a look at a few other problems in here um, associated with this mid, uh, this mid segment or median. So we can tell right away that this is a mid segment. It starts at the midpoint of one side and it goes to the midpoint of the other side. But in this case, I didn't label any numbers with the bases in here. I put these tick marks in to represent all of these angles. And hopefully you recognize that if that is a trapezoid and one pair of sides are, are parallel to be a trapezoid, it turns out that the median also has this another amazing uh, relationship to the two bases. Well, it's also parallel. The mid segment here is also going to be parallel, which means that this angle is congruent to that angle. And that looks like a, a, a corresponding angle from our chapter three knowledge. And the same thing is over here. This angle and this angle is going to be congruent. They are corresponding. It looks like these two angles in here, they're corresponding angles as well. And these two angles in here are congruent as well. They are corresponding. So there's a lot of geometry going on in here. We have several parallel lines. We have uh, um, a couple transversals in here. We have corresponding angles. We have same side interior angles as well. Um, and the then the relationship between the two bases uh, and the median, uh, the median is going to be the average. So hopefully you can connect on that the median has a lot going for it here. It's parallel to the bases and it's also the average of the two bases. So let's take a look at a few more problems. So we've got this problem in here, and this one's pretty straightforward. I can tell by all the tick marks that this is the median or mid-segment. And when I add up these two numbers, I get 80, therefore x has to be 40. And that's a pretty straightforward problem in there. Uh, the numbers are real easy. But let's scroll down and take a look at another problem. It's not as straightforward. So in this case, we have one base being 8 and the other base being y. In this case, we already know the median to be 18. Well, another thing to think about, along with the, what I was mentioning before, the intuitive pattern between the mid-segment and the bases, notice here we went up 10 units. So what number comes to mind to keep the pattern going is to go up another 10 units to keep the pattern going. So in this case, y would be 28. And there's another way to ver verify that. What can I do? I can test it out. How about 8 plus 28 divided by 2, because that would be taking the average. That's 36 divided by 2. That would be 18. And that's a verification there that the median is 18. Well, let's get a little more complicated here in our medians. Um, and again, this is a median. I can tell by all the tick marks. Notice what we have here. We have an expression for one of the bases, and we have an expression for the other base. Well, shoot, I can't really see the pattern in here. The only number I really know is 40. So how do I set this up? Well, you have to think averages. What's the average? Well, I'm going to take this base. I'm going to add it to the other base. I'm going to divide it by 2. And what does that have to equal? That has to equal 40. So hopefully you can see that the x plus 10 is one side. The 2x plus 60 is the other base, the other side. And when I add them together to divide by 2, it has to equal 40. So how do we solve for this? Well, I'm going to go back to Algebra 1. I'm going to cross multiply. And when I cross multiply, this looks like what? This looks like 80 plus 40 times 2 is 80 equals uh, this whole numerator times 1, which is going to be 2x plus x is 3x and 10 plus 60 is 70. So what is left in here? Will we bring the 70 on the other side? That's 10. 
So 3x is 10, x looks like it's going to be 3 and 1 third, or 3.3 repeated, and we just found x. If we really wanted to, we can back substitute and find these two bases if we had to, uh, but we were just looking to find x. So hopefully uh, this has been your crash course on uh, a mid-segment slash median and how it relates to the bases in terms of its angles and how uh, it relates in terms of the length compared to the two bases. All right, we'll see you soon.